Alleluia! The word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such a great crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm amazed at how we turn everything into a competition. Not a week goes by that I'm not invited to compete in some way or another to win something or another. It happens with small things like on social media. On Facebook, sometimes you're asked to describe your week using six emojis. Well, sometimes when you see the replies, it seems like there's competition to come up with the most silly or creative emojis to describe one's week. Sometimes it's through more serious things in which we're invited to compete. I know since I've been posting YouTube videos of our Sunday services, I often check the number of views that we get, especially the views that my sermons get, and compare that with a colleague who is posting on YouTube. Oh, good, I have, I have four more views than my colleague. Well, well, nice going, Pastor Chad. <laughs> it is of little wonder, then, that when we come to parables of grace, like the one this Sunday, we compulsively look for the competitive spin in them. The story, as I understand it, in, in a time, 
if this took place before they were farm cooperatives where you could go and order seed from Monsanto or DuPont, tells of a sower. This sower is no doubt the farmer, and he's going out to sow. The seed that he was sowing would have been carefully hand-selected. There were no machines to do this back then. The sower would have had selected from the best of the previous season's seed. It would have been carefully stored and protected from damp and from insect infestation. And then you would expect to hear in the story that after tilling the soil and preparing it so carefully for sowing, the sower would have waited for the right weather conditions, and then, on the right day, would have gone out to sow. Now, that's not the way the story goes, is it? I cannot remember the first time I heard this story because it was one of those that I heard from my earliest childhood years, like in Sunday school, I do remember a picture of the sower from Sunday school. It was on a little memory verse stamp, about yay big, that we had to lick and place into our memory verse book that we collected. I also remember that throughout my childhood, this parable was taught as being about the quality of the soil and not about the qualities of the sower. You see, the parable has some wonderful content for ever competitive learners and educators to, well, dig into. Pardon the pun. All throughout my childhood, I was asked over and over, what kind of soil are you? Are you bringing in the best harvest of all that God has invested of you? The old time-bound sheet, so indicative of the flavor of the Lutheran Christianity into which I was raised, was firmly drawn in my life. I had to bounce the books or be damned, quite literally. It was only in the last 20 years or so, as I lived with this passage, that I have come to realize that, as with so many of the other parables that Jesus told, this story was designed to illustrate the divine domain of God in a way that would evoke strong emotions from the hearers. Just like the shocking story of the waiting father welcoming his prodigal son, so the sower of this parable is a prodigal too. That might be surprising to hear, but the word prodigal actually means somebody who is very free, somebody who spends lavishly. The prodigal son got that moniker because when he got his father's inheritance, he spent it lavishly and quickly until it was gone. As if for some reason that was the main point of the parable, which it's not. But prodigal and the prodigal nature of certain characters are key in these parables of grace. Like in the parable of the prodigal son, I think it should be called the parable of the prodigal father because the father spread his love so freely to both sons, the son who had returned after being away and pretty much disowning his father, and the other son, the elder son who stayed but was really resentful of his father's actions. The prodigal father's love 
was spread so liberally, it would have taken the hearers by surprise. And then, when we get to this parable, the parable of the sower, we find the sower is also prodigal. He doesn't till and fertilize the soil. He doesn't wait for the right conditions. He takes this seed, this precious seed, and just throws it about wherever. If it, if it, if it goes into uh, the cracks, all well. If it goes amongst the thorns, it doesn't matter. It's okay. What kind of farming is this? Precious seed cast about carelessly in the rocky wastes and amongst thorns is prodigal at best and downright unskillful to boot. This is a story that would have shocked and confused those early agrarians because of the waste of such good seed. To then have this sower identified as God would have been shocking indeed. In a shame-blame religious culture, where the righteousness of people was measured by their position on the pyramid of power, prestige, and privilege, to even think that the word of God could come to those who seemed to be so easily overcome by the evil one or by the cares of the world, well, that's a scandal. Yet, that's exactly what this parable suggests. The seeds of grace fall indiscriminately into the lives of all God's children from a God who is ever so prodigal in spreading that grace. Much like a sower taking seed and just casting it around. The outcome of that gracious sowing will not be immediately known. One never knows what may come of such prodigal grace. But to make of Christ following an exercise in soil inspection is to pave the heart. It's an attempt to throttle the power of God. Still, the sower sows wildly, day by day. Some hear, some are hardened. Some see, some remain blind. Yet, the sower simply just sows. The sower sows on and on in gracious abandon. Thank God, the prodigal sower. Amen.